The days were hot. Fish died in the lake, plants yellowed, birds stopped singing. There was thunder, but no rain. You call this period the Great Ecological Catastrophe. I heard my mother's heartbeat as she carried me to Alphaville. People chased us. I remember her driving and bison running by. Then we reached the flooded city with refugees in rubber boats. Suddenly, I couldn't find Mama. I was scared and alone. I'll never know whether she died or abandoned me. I only remember the rockets leaving for Mars. That night, the fighting started. I ran deep into the forest. A she-wolf found me and raised me with her cops. People who didn't make it into the rockets were dying in combat. And from the mutating environment. But we, the orphans and animals, didn't fight. Instead, together we adapted to nature that grew out of the rubble. Many moons passed, and then one day, some humans returned. They called themselves Martians. They flew around dressed in yellow. They went hunting and played golf. I would steal their golf balls for fun. It really upset them. But then one day, I found a dead Martian. I took off his helmet and put it on. There was music playing in it. After years of only speaking wolf, I listened to the Martian radio and learned human language again. After the group left, one full moon later, I was chasing a tasty bug when another spaceship with new Martians arrived. It soon became clear they were trouble. Greetings all you Tesla City Martians out there. You're listening to Radio Nostalgia from Mars. The show for those who missed a morning run in the park, slurping minister on the seat, sailing with the wind in their hair, Singing in unison with thousands of people at a music concert, or smelling the coming room. In other words, a show for the longest day of our life.
monsters will overcome Even the Armageddon Bombs and legs propel me Starting off the show with Son of No One, a song I'm fairly certain resonates with many of us orphans of the earth out here in the stuffy depths of space. Speaking of stuffy air, please don't attempt to open portal windows to let some fresh air in. It's unbelievable that we have to mention this, but when living in pressurized domes, people, breathing recycled air is just the new normal. In totally unrelated news, the memorial of Baroness von Wollenschitt will be held in private and her family asks gold diggers and paparazzi to respectfully stay away from the funeral ceremony being held in the Section C cafeteria on Deck 3 at 7pm dawn time. Alright, on with the show.
added the toddler pop there, taking us back to the days of late stage capitalism at its finest. Child labor never sounded so sweet. On that note, it's time for another story, a look back at life on the open road, and look forward to the long road. Original sources, authentic tales, hope, inspiration, dreams, creating psychic commands. Crying while riding a Harley Davidson is the actual moment. I'm serious. I tried to recreate that feeling here on Mars. So I took a Tesla City Delivery EVA for a spin on the Planitia Plains, but it's like driving a janky VR thing. You made me miss riding my motorcycle, my Jolene, even more. At 35, for 30 days in the blistering heat of July, I took a 4,600-mile trip across America on my motorcycle. We set off from California, we zigzagged up and down the country, and covered 18 states all the way up to New York City, where I was to take over my father's company. During the trip, the biggest surprise for me was how much of my thinking was practical. Even banal, I just focused on staying alive at 70 miles an hour on two wheels with crazy winds buffeting me in all directions. So while my mind was this constant barrage of compulsive thoughts, those thoughts were generally practical. Like, how do I get to that destination before dark? Am I drinking enough water? Am I hydrating? The bigger picture stuff of why am I doing this and what is life about anyway didn't come until later. We started the trip at the peak of California's infamous orange heat wave and we rode it for five days in temperatures you wouldn't believe. Some mornings I'd have sweat dripping from my elbows before we even set off. My eyes hurt from the sun. Sometimes I'd wake up so sore I could barely move. My inner thighs had engine burn. And even though those closest to me actually didn't think I'd make it, I learned that I could physically overcome much more than I thought. So after that rite of passage, I knew I could take over the company. Instead of being an entitled little brat whose father would pay for her theatre career, I turned the company into a trillion dollar business. And now, here I am with my family on Mars, among the last representatives of humanity in the universe. But aside from this high-minded idealism, life has no meaning. Because of these damn EVA suits, there's no wind on the highway here. No open air solitude that makes you feel one with the world like back on Earth. On Mars, even if you manage to get outside, you're still trapped in a bubble of your own stale air. No matter where you go, isolation clings to you. Unlike the open road, it's an experience of void, not wholeness. There's no dancing asphalt in the heat and no neon-lit diners and 2am omelettes with green bell peppers and yellow cheddar with a side of burnt hash browns. Greasy bacon and black coffee. Instead, there's this barren rock and strictly monitored oxygen levels in sterile domes. We live in bubbles within bubbles. I admire how far we've come and how resilient we are, but I wonder... Just... Maybe we're just fooling ourselves. Just like during my epic ride, we've mostly figured out the banal questions about water and food and sanitation, and now the greater questions are new. What are we really doing here? What is our future? And what... Alejandro. ¿Qué? El bebé no es suyo. And what will the meaning of life be for my kids? At any rate, the point is, I miss my job now. That's all. Thanks for listening. Thank you for taking us on that ride with you, Brianna. Your story is an inspiration for all and reminds us to face our difficulties head on and to value the small things in life, even out here on Mars. Motorcycles, grease, wind in the hair. What better way to remember than the sun psychedelic rock? Radio Nostalgia Mars
Ah. 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 I crouched near three members of your Martian expedition. The rest of your group were out in the field. I hoped to make friends, but when you saw me, you froze. Stopped picking plants and whispered among yourselves. You seemed very scared and confused. Amazed that I could breathe without a suit. You rushed towards me, so I ran. You really thought you could hunt me down? <laughs> <laughs> Hello all you Martians out there, it's time for another round of Radio Nostalgia from Mars. To Sol's episode is an energetic tour de force of nostalgia from the good old days. Buckle up, buckle down, and enjoy.
12, engage in orbit.
picking up the pace for all you movers and shakers out there. A reminder to keep on at it whatever you're doing. So I ran, avoiding the nets. The same ones you used on my wolf brothers and sisters. This whole hunt was for so-called research purposes. To see if humans could return here one day. But even with jetpacks, you still couldn't navigate our new terrain. I am a nimble earthling. Well, you need so much gear just to stay alive. Welcome back all you Martians out there, you're tuned to Tesla City's number one radio station for music, stories, news and views related to Earth. Reminding us all that even out here on Mars, one fact remains, we still circle around the same old sun.
Oh yeah, it's time for another episode of Radio Nostalgia from Mars. Any soul now, we're hoping to hear from our intrepid Earth explorers who are currently working hard right now collecting botanical, animal and geological samples to test the viability of us returning back to Earth in the near future. I do hope they have time to catch a breath. 
with all that hard work they're doing for us. It's all gone. The only way is for me to land on the asteroid. Honey, but you're just a miner. Who would think that only a miner could save the world? I'm proud of you. Here comes the meat when I dump. Here comes the elite finder. Run, come, run. Here comes the meat when I dump. Run. Here comes the elite finder. Run, come, run. So we made it to Mars and then it's safe. But we ain't all back without a blink, blink, blink. Remember that. It's not a dream. I'm here in space. No one can even scream, scream, scream. MCAIT they're proving to be very popular amongst the youth of Mars these days. In a track called Run Cub Run. Not enough space up here for that. <laughs> but well place fitness zones do provide basic training simulation facilities. So why not drop by for a virtual run and update your bone density shots while you're there? It must be beautiful, exhilarating, sublime to be back on Earth. I'm pretty sure some of our fearless leaders are tuned into episodes of RNFM, so guys. When you have a moment, please share your impressions down there with all of us up here on Mars. Radio Nostalgia from Mars, the best channel for Earth-related news and news.
Every clue told me a different story, but each pointed to one thing. Murder. Your Martian trio was getting tired. You should have realized Earth was not your planet anymore. This wasn't the homecoming you were expecting at all. Enraged, only the captain went on with the pursuit. For him, this turned into an obsessive safari hunt. But he was also exhausting himself as I lured him deeper into the forest. I'm in the multiverse to help you fight Turbo the NATO. Where's the green flashlight? What are you doing here? Who invited him?
My wolf brothers and sisters, we ate the Martian. Bruised and tired, but with a full stomach. I went on. I found myself in an industrial area when I saw a tiny spaceship crash land in the distance. Eventually, I would meet the lonely Martian that came out of that spaceship. 